Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm here with a kind of epic book haul. So even though I feel like I've done some like dedicated hauling of books lately, like I had a book outlet haul, I hauled books in my New York Comic Con vlog, so there's been a lot of books, but all of the other books that weren't in those have been piling up and it is time for me to haul those with you. So I have some really exciting things. I actually won a pretty cool giveaway, so I'm excited to share that. I have some stuff that was sent to me for review. I have some pre-orders that came in. I've got Book of the Month, so let's get into it. First up, I have Book of the Month and Book of the Month YA. I am an affiliate for Book of the Month Club YA, so if you use my link down below, I do get a commission on that, and there is a code that will save you on your first book. You can get the first one for $9.99. It's pretty great. Um, for both the adult and YA versions, you get, yikes, okay. For both the adult and YA versions, you do get one new release hardcover for $15, including shipping, and there are add-on books for $10 each. I pay f for my own subscription to the regular Book of the Month Club, and I love it. And I think Book of the Month YA has been coming out with some really, really fantastic titles. So, um, if you're interested in either of those, the links are down below. I'm going to share with you what I got. Book of the Month YA, because I'm an affiliate, they do send these to me for free, and then I pay for my own books for the adult version. My pick for October was Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. This is a debut novel that I have been hearing such fantastic things about. I'm really excited for it. It is a epic YA fantasy. It does, yes, of course, have dragons in it, but also it's supposed to have lots of political intrigue and interesting twists and turns, and um, yeah, really excited for this one. Everybody seems to be loving it, and it definitely sounds up my alley. And then Book of the Month YA also did a special promotional thing where we could get a second book from September. I just haven't had a chance to share this with you. So I do also have Frankly in Love by David Yoon. Um, he is the husband of Nicola Yoon. This is his debut novel, and it is a YA contemporary that I've also been hearing really good things about. So yeah, they will be joining my Book of the Month shelf over here. And um, both of them are ones that I'm really excited to pick up. So thank you so much to Book of the Month YA for those. And then, um, if you noticed, my box this month is larger than usual because I did in fact get to add on books. So I'm going to show you the book that I picked as my main book for October and then the two books I added on because I had some extra credits to use. So the main book that I picked I'm really excited for. This is Adult Fantasy. It is Fate of the Fallen by Kel Cade. I actually do have an arc of this that I have not yet gotten to. This is an early release. This is the other cool thing is sometimes you get books a month ahead of their release date. This book comes out in November but we got it in October for Book of the Month Club which is pretty cool and I've been really interested in this. It's basically this idea of what if Frodo died early on in the quest and Samwise Gamgee had to finish it off. So that sounds like a whole lot of fun. I'm really excited to pick this one up and I think this is also a debut. So yeah, really excited to have that. And then I also picked up the Book of the Month Club edition of The Water Dancer by ta Coates. I did have an arc of this, I did read it and review it, and if you want to hear my thoughts on it, check out my mid-month wrap-up for October. I really, really loved this, I knew I wanted to own a copy, and I love his work in general, so this I thought was a really great way to add it to my collection. And then the final book that I added on this month is kind of a beast, I actually don't think I realized quite how huge this is. It's The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. So I read Secret History by her, and I did really like it. I have heard such mixed things about this book. There are people who love it, there are people who hate it. That seems to be true with Secret History as well, but since I liked that, I am interested to try this one and the premise sounds interesting, so we'll see. And I think they're making a movie of it, so I thought I would add that to my collection and see how I feel. There you go, we've got like quite the stack of Book of the Month Club books today, which is very exciting. So if any of you guys are interested in checking them out, again, links are below. All right, moving on, um, let's go ahead and talk about my two pre-orders, because I had two pre-orders that came in that I'm very excited to have in my possession, one of which I have already read, and that is The Beautiful by Renee Adia. Um, I, look how pretty, it's like this beautiful, beautiful cover. So I really enjoyed this. I actually do have a entire standalone review of this, which I will link up above if you guys want to go and check it out. People have had really mixed responses to this book, but I loved it. I wanted to own a copy, 
And this was actually also one of the options for Book of the Month YA, which I think is really cool. I had already pre-ordered it and knew that I wanted this edition of it, so I didn't get that as my choice this month because it's got this beautiful like lion imprint here, which you don't get on the Book of the Month editions. So I was like, you know what, I am going to just stick with this. And look, there's a map of New Orleans. It's so pretty. It's so much fun. I'm really, really excited to continue on with the series. Um, vampires are back and it's great. And I know like this is not what some people were expecting because it is really in a lot of ways more a mystery than it is like a paranormal romance. And I think maybe it was marketed more as that and it's less that. You don't officially know who the vampires are until really late in the book and a lot of people found that to be pretty annoying. I loved it but I also like her writing style so like your mileage may vary on this but I was a fan so I'm happy to own a copy. And the other pre-order that came in is Royal Holiday by Jasmine Guillory. In general, I have been really enjoying her romance and look how pretty this is. This is like beautiful. I am kind of saving this because I think I want to read it a little closer to the holidays and look, it's a hardcover. I didn't get on super well with the proposal, but other than that, I have loved her books and uh, yeah, I think this will be really, really fun. And this one follows a woman who is on a work trip to England who gets to know one of the palace butlers or something and they fall for each other or something like that, but I think it's gonna be really fun. And speaking of holiday romances, I do have three that were sent to me by the Harlequin publicity team this month. These are for promotion on Instagram and they all just look super adorable, so I thought I would share. First we have Stealing Kisses in the Snow by Joe McNally, a Rendezvous Falls novel. This one follows a single mom with two kids who runs a inn and a rugged biker who stops through town and of course they fall for each other around the holidays so that seems like it'll be really fun. I also have Christmas in Winter Valley by Jody Thomas. This one takes place in Texas in nature and on ranches and has big family holiday things going on and of course a romance. And then lastly we have The Giving Heart by Tony Blake and this one follows a girl who house sits on an island for her sister over the holidays and her conflict with a local real estate developer who's trying to cut down trees along the property and so they have a conflict and then of course obviously fall for each other so yeah those all look really fun perfect for kind of the holiday season I might need to like come up with a whole TBR of like holiday romances that I would read going into Christmas because I think they're really fun um, but saying thank you so much to Harlequin for sending those to me you can expect to see some pretty Christmassy pictures of these on my Instagram timeline sometime soon. Next I have five books to share that I was sent by Fierce Reads which is Macmillan's YA group. I'm on their mailing list and so they send me a quarterly box of ARCs to check out. So I'm going to share with you guys the five that they sent me. These are all 2020 releases and I will say it's kind of a mixed bag. There's a couple I'm really excited about and a couple that I'm are maybe not quite up my alley so I'll probably pass those on to a friend who would be more interested in them but I'm going to put them all in here in case you guys are interested. So the first one I am pretty excited to read. This is All Boys Are in Blue, a memoir manifesto by George M. Johnson. This one is coming out in April of 2020 and it is about growing up black and queer in America. Very excited to read this. I think we really need more of this, books by queer men of color. This is not something we get a whole lot of and so I think this is a really exciting one to be coming out so I'm definitely going to be reading and reviewing this one for sure. I was also sent How to Speak Boy by Tiana Smith. This is a January release and it is a YA contemporary romance about two rivals on a speech and debate team in high school. It sounds like it might be cute. This is one I'm kind of on the fence about. I might pick it up and read it. It seems like if I want just kind of like a fun light read this might be a really good pick. Um, so yeah, if that sounds up your alley, definitely go check it out. I was on speech and debate in high school, so maybe I should read this one. <laughs> Next is one that's probably less up my alley, just because historical fiction is sometimes a little bit of a harder sell for me, but the cover is really beautiful. This is Gone by Nightfall by Dee Gerritsen. This one is coming out in January, and it is set in 1917 Tsarist Russia and it's about a girl who wants to go to medical school and become a doctor but then revolution hits her country and she's got to escape but also wants to save her family. So yeah it sounds like it's probably really great for what it is. I will probably pass this on to one of my friends who reads a lot more of this type of historical fiction. It's less my thing but I think a lot of people are probably going to enjoy it. Next we have Miss You, Love You, Hate You, Bye by Abby Schur. This one is coming out in February. It's another YA contemporary and this is about friendship and mental health. 
from what I understand it's about two girls who are best friends and one of them is kind of falling apart her parents are getting divorced and she's going through a lot of stuff and it's kind of about you know how do you be a friend how do you handle those sorts of things and deal with mental health issues as they come up within friendships which is definitely I think needed and very relevant and then lastly is the one that I am most excited for cannot wait to read this one it is dark and deepest red by Anna Marie McLemore this one is also coming out in January honestly I don't even know exactly what this is about all I know is that I absolutely adore everything that I have read by Anna Marie McLemore the writing in these books is just so beautiful so poetic they are magical realism sometimes retelling fairy tales or creating things that feel a bit like fairy tales and I just can't get enough so what is this one about um, this one is about two girls 500 years apart oh it's a retelling of the dancing sh of oh this is interesting okay so it sounds like this is a retelling of the dancing shoes fairy tale of like shoes that make somebody dance until they fall down and die basically it's kind of like a dark thing but this follows two women set 500 years apart and it says it pairs the forbidding magic of a fairy tale with a modern story of passion and betrayal i'm so here for it this is definitely one that you're going to see me reading and reviewing really soon so thank you so much to fierce reads for sending me all of those um some of them are titles i'm very excited to be reading and some of them are ones that i'm hopefully going to pass on to some other reviewers who i think are going to be super excited for them um but yeah definitely go check these out if you guys are interested in any of them. Um, okay, so next in the way of upcoming releases, I did an ARCs for Trade where people will like trade back and forth advanced reader copies of books that they don't need anymore. I had a couple that were signed and I traded for two that I am super super anticipating, one of which I will be reading in November. So that is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Look how beautiful this is. Um, she is the author of The Night Circus and this is her highly anticipated second novel that is coming out in November. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to be able to get my hands on this. A lot of people I know have been very excited to read it. And so I was really thrilled when this was um, a possibility for trade. So I traded for that. And then the other one that I traded for is an anthology that's coming next year that I'm excited for. This is called A Phoenix First Must Burn, 16 Stories of Black Girl Magic, Resistance, and Hope, edited by Patrice Caldwell. The cover is absolutely stunning. This one is coming out in March, I think through Penguin Teen. I'm really excited for this. It says Beyonce's Lemonade meets Octavia Butler in 16 Tales by best-selling and award-winning authors that explore the black experience through fantasy, science fiction, and magic. I'm really excited for this. Elizabeth Acevedo, Danielle Clayton, Charlotte Nicole Davis, Justina Ireland, Samaya Dawood, uh, L.L. McKinney, Daniel Page, E.B. Zaboy, like Rebe Rebecca Roanhorse. There are so many amazing authors contributing to this, so I'm really excited to pick it up. So yeah, very, very thrilled for that. So thank you so much to Brie who traded me for these. I'm very, very happy to have them. That was awesome. Then I have a few more books that were sent to me for review, a few books that I purchased, and some books that I won in a giveaway, which was pretty cool. So the first thing that was sent to me for review is a book that's coming out in March of next year. And the author actually reached out to me to see if I'd be interested in this, and I'm pretty excited to pick it up. This is Salty Bittersweet by Myra Cuevas. This is a debut Latinx YA contemporary story about a girl who is an aspiring chef, but is dealing with a lot of difficult circumstances at home. So it's part coming of age story, part dealing with divorce and having a stepmom who's now pregnant and also trying to pursue your dreams and food I think is a really central part of this. So yeah, really excited for this one. It goes on sale March 3rd of next year, so definitely go check it out. I will for sure be reviewing this sometime in the coming months. And then I was sent a finished copy of a book by Quirk Books that just looks so fun and entertaining. It's a cookbook, guys. It's called Forking Good, an unofficial cookbook for fans of The Good Place. We are fans of The Good Place. If you haven't seen it, it's hilarious and so smart and so funny. And this cookbook looks amazing. So I need to sit down and like flip through and read it. But ah, we're losing things. When is this going on sale? Let's see. When does this go on sale? So this go, this went on sale October 22nd. It is available now. It's really beautiful. It, the design is just super cute. It's got a combination of little essays about different things in the story combined with kind of funny recipes like uh hegels and locks it's all like philosophy stuff ad hominy 
I can't believe it's not buttermilk pa pancakes. It's like a lot of puns, um, which I just think is really funny. Macaroni and soccer cheese. <laughs> like, what else do we have here? There are like some really good ones in here. Um, we'll see. Candied apples. <laughs> I love a good bun, you guys. I just think this is so funny. Dante's Nine Layers of Torture Bars. So yeah, it's it's all like on brand for The Good Place, which I just think is hilarious. So if you're interested, if you like cooking, if you like The Good Place, I definitely would go check it out. I'm excited to kind of actually sit down and read through this and maybe make some of the recipes. Actually, you know what? That might be a great plan because... I have a baking related tag that I was tagged in, so maybe I should like make one of these recipes and do the tag. That could be fun. And then the last thing that I was sent this month was a really, really excited and unexpected package from Orbit. I am so excited to start working with Orbit. They do a lot of really, really fantastic sci-fi fantasy. Um, N.K. Jemisin's books are published through Orbit. A lot of other really great fantasy sci-fi books are published through Orbit and Paula is one of their publicity people and she's just really really lovely and so she sent me a surprise package and I'm so excited about it because one of these books has actually been on my wish list for months because my friend Jocelyn over at Yogi with a Book has raved about it and said it's amazing. This is Empire of Sand by Tasha Sori. I think this was actually her debut novel and it's like a Middle Eastern inspired fantasy that apparently is really, really good. So I trust Jocelyn's taste on most things and I'm, she thinks that I'm gonna love this. So I'm really excited for it. So I was sent this and the companion novel, which is not out yet, Realm of Ash. Look how beautiful they are. Thank you so much, Paula and Orbit. And on top of that, they sent me a cute little note with a really pretty special Empire of Sands pin. And I love enamel pins. So yeah, really, really excited to add those to my shelf. Um, I need to get into this because I've heard such good things and I'm really excited to have the opportunity to read them. So that was really cool. Okay, next let's talk about the books that I bought because <laughs> I'm always buying something. Um, and then I will share with you the giveaway that I won, which was pretty awesome. So most of the books that I purchased this month were from The Strand, which is my local indie bookstore I usually frequent. But one of them I picked up at the other bookstore I occasionally go to, which is Housing Works Books. I like to talk about it because I think it's a really fantastic nonprofit organization. All of the books that they sell there have been donated by individuals or by publishers. All of the people who work there are volunteers and all of the proceeds go to support this really fantastic nonprofit organization. So the other day I was dropping off some books to donate and while I was there I perused the shelves and found something that I snapped up pretty quick. So I saw this originally at Comic-Con and was like, oh, I'm adding that to my wish list because it's stunning, but it's like $35 and I can't spend that right now. But I found it for $10 at Housing Works. So this is the brand new illustrated edition of Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. It is beautiful. So this is a modern fantasy classic and like look how stunning this is this is the 25th anniversary edition of it and it's just really beautiful there's a map and there are illustrations throughout it these are my children so this is an illustration of i think the original cover and then there's others throughout so i'll like find a few to show you because they're just they're really beautiful there's one i don't know who did the art in these but it's just stunning there's one. Let's find one more. There's more than this, but um, there's one. Oh, yeah. So yeah, if you're ever in New York, definitely go check out Housing Works. Sometimes you can find really amazing deals on things. This was probably donated by the publisher, so I got it for $10, which is amazing. I'm really excited to add this to my shelves. So I donated some books to them. I sold back some books to The Strand, and so I've used store credit to purchase, I think, actually most of the books in this haul. I might have paid a few dollars, but pretty much this was all on store credit. The first thing is The Adventure Zone, Murder on the Rockport Limited by the McElroys and some other people. This is the sequel to the first one, which I really enjoyed, and it's actually in hardcover. And um, I think this was overstock because they had it outside for $2. $2, guys. I can't even tell you how excited I am to have this. I really, really enjoyed the first book. I've been wanting to continue on, and so I'm really happy to add this graphic novel to my collection. Like, seriously, $2. Um, this is the thing with The Strand. You can sometimes 
get things for amazing prices. If they have overstock of people selling too many items back to them or for whatever reason, they'll sometimes put them discounted on the carts outside for like a dollar for a paperback, two dollars for hardcover, so you can find stuff there. And on the shelves, because they sell both new and used books, you can sometimes find used, used new condition books for half price. So usually if I'm saying I found a half price copy of something at the Strand, it's because I found something that someone had sold to them, it was used but in brand new condition, and you pay like half the retail rate, which is amazing. Speaking of those discounted overstock books, there was one other that I picked up also for $2 that I'm really excited about. This is a middle grade novel, Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mbala. It is part of the Rick Riordan Presents imprint. So this imprint has been publishing books about mythology from a lot of different cultures by authors of color and I love what they're doing. And this one features a African American boy and it deals with the mythology of John Henry. So really excited to give this a try. Um, and it's beautiful, like it's like brand new condition and it was $2. Oh look, it has a map. I love, I love books with, ma with maps. Um, yeah, so that's exciting. Very happy to have that. And then lastly, there were two half price copies that I picked up, again, with store credit. The first one, um, again, I think mostly with store credit, maybe I paid for one of these. The first one is finishing out a collection of books. I really need to continue on with the trilogy, but uh, now I own them all. This is Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden, book three of the Winter Night trilogy. So I read The Bear and the Nightingale like two years ago and really loved it and then just haven't finished. So I own all of them in paperback now. This one was $8.50 um, and they're all just really really pretty so I just need to finish them. <laughs> so it's on my agenda. Uh, the problem is I always have like so many books I want to read and if only I could just sit down and just read for like a month and do nothing else that would be so great. I would get through so many books but you know alas life does not work that way. And the last book I picked up was entirely on store credit but it was $13.50 for a brand new book that is just coming out and I've been hearing such good things about it. I'm so excited to try this. It is Steel Crow Saga by Paul Kruger. So this is being called Pokemon combined with Avatar The Last Airbender. It is adult epic fantasy and apparently is really great. It's got twists and turns and politics and interesting characters and it's also just really beautiful. I love the cover. Part of it's matte and then part of it's like smooth and shiny and it's just such a pretty book. Um, so yeah, really, really excited to dive into this one as well. And then the last set of books I have to share with you, I was so excited. I rarely win things like big giveaways and I went to the Brooklyn Book Festival and signed up for a couple of giveaways. Macmillan was doing this big one. I never win stuff like this so I was shocked when they emailed me and said I won this giveaway, um, which was really exciting. So they sent me five beautiful hardcover new releases that they had coming out this fall. So I'm going to share them with you. And one of them is a book that I was going to purchase on my own anyway. So I was really excited not to have to spend the money on it. So, so I will share that one first just because I'm probably most excited for this one. It is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. Guys, I can't believe I won this. It's so exciting. So I actually just finished recently listening to this on audiobook. And um, I think it's gonna make my favorites of the year list, but I also think it's gonna be a very polarizing book. I mean, what else is new? I feel like many of my favorites are polarizing. The, anyway, you will hear about it in my monthly wrap up, but um, yeah, it's so pretty. And there's like a snake on the end papers. So awesome. And a map. Let's find the map. Where's the map? I think there's a map. I think there's a map. Is there a map? Yeah, a map of Yale in New Haven. Um, so yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was so excited. And it's adult fiction, so it's kind of expensive. It's like almost $30. So I was thrilled to win this in the giveaway. Very, very exciting. But I also won some other pretty exciting things. One of which I'm not sure is so much up my alley, but the cover is absolutely stunning. This is Toil and Trouble by Augustin Burroughs. Look how beautiful that is. Like it feels really nice and the cover design is just stunning on this one. So I've actually never read anything by Augustin Burroughs, but apparently he's known for writing kind of controversial, edgy nonfiction. He's written a whole series of memoirs, including Running with Scissors, which was adapted into a film. And in this memoir, he talks about how he's a witch and descended from a line of witches. Um, 
I don't know like the tone of it just reading the description doesn't really sound like it would be a great fit for me but I know a lot of people are very into his books so I do appreciate Macmillan sending it to me. That said, the other three books that they sent me I am quite interested in reading. The first one is Me by Elton John. This is his very first autobiography and I actually recently watched Rocket Man with my husband and it was super interesting so especially coming off of that I'm very curious to see what he has to say about himself and it's just such a pretty book like look at that. Um, it's got like rainbowish end papers um, and it's got and it's got like photos of him inside the book, which I just love that. I really like it when memoirs and autobiographies and stuff include photos. I just think they're fun to see. So yeah, very, very thrilled to have that. Definitely plan on picking that up. Um, and then another nonfiction book is Here We Are, a memoir by R.T. Namdev Shahani. This is about the American immigrant experience. Again, something I'm very interested in. The author is an NPR correspondent and she grew up in New York but her family came there from India by way of Casablanca and so this is kind of about their experience with all of that and being immigrants which sounds super interesting. The tagline here says American dreams, American nightmares. So that's uh, definitely interesting. And then the final book that came in this package is another pretty exciting release. This is Warrior of the Altai by Robert Jordan. So this is actually a very interesting book. It's coming out through Tor. Robert Jordan is known for his Wheel of Time series. He is now deceased, so this book is being released posthumously. But this was actually the very first book that he wrote and sold to an editor. However, because his editor changed publishers and different things happened, it was never published during his lifetime, and so now it is being published. And so I'm really interested to pick this up. I've been hearing pretty good things about it. It's not very long, I mean, especially compared to his Wheel of Time books, but um, yeah, really happy to have that as well. There you go. Those were the five books sent to me from Macmillan. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much um, for that. It was really exciting to get to win those in a giveaway. <laughs> All right, so yeah, there you go. That was quite the... <laughs> book haul. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on any of these. If these are books that you've been interested in reading or excited to see come out. And for your question of the day, let me know which of the upcoming releases that I talked about today you are most interested to see me read and review on this channel. I would be very curious to hear your response to that. So let me know in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.